to this week's Fireside Chat with Jesse. I am joined today by Brent Hall, Senior Vice President of Alliance Funding Group. Great having you on here, Brent. Good morning. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. No, it's, uh, you know, I apologize. It took so long for me to reach out and get you on one of these things. Um, I think I have probably met you at my first conference in 2005 and always enjoyed visiting with you and, you know, look forward to kind of sharing your story with the audience that I have for these chats here, man. So thank you again. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You weren't kidding about the fireside chat. You actually have a fire. I'm, uh... <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's interesting is, is it's January in Arizona, even though this will air in February. And kind of before we hit record, it's cold out here. But there's still no heat coming from this. I can turn off the heat functionality. Because <laughs> otherwise, in June, when I'm doing these, I would be maybe have a superimposed in the background. That's but, funny. Uh... That's funny. <laughs> so much well, congratulations uh, to, to you and the work that, that you've done. Just been a, a joy watching this, uh, this journey uh, for you and, and what you've done with it and, and where you've taken it. Uh, Thanks, very impressed. Very impressed. Thank you. Trying to trying to do what I can, given what I've been given. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no worries. Um, uh, well, thank awesome. you for 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 having me again. I, I really appreciate it. I was I was thinking about after I got your your invitation, um, you know, something to to speak about that could be different or or unique and and. Uh, um, you know, I had the opportunity to help install uh, Adam Peterson uh, as, as the, the new NEFA president. And um, in that presentation talked about being a, a legacy. And, you know, most people don't pick to get in this industry. Yeah, there's the, the craziest stories of all time. Um, I think my favorite was Bob Rohde, you know, who started out as a, as a Philly cop. Uh, became a bar owner, uh, and then got into the leasing business. Uh, that one makes the most sense to me. Um, but everybody has these unique journeys of how they get into this business. I think I've heard every kind of story there is. You know, nobody wakes up and says, gosh darn it, I'm going to get into the equipment lease and finance business. Uh, it just doesn't happen. And then there's, there's a small group of us that were, were literally born into it. And it's, and it's an interesting journey. Um, and in the audience, um, you know, I had Amy Sprague, who is Betty Kuhulis' daughter. She's an industry person. John Bonningheimer, who's Bernie Bonningheimer's son. You know, these are people that I've literally grown up with and in the industry. It's a very different and, and unique experience. You know, I I was joking with you earlier, you know, I used to be the young guy, you know, I was the, the kid, you know, with all these old, you know, industry veterans, and all of a sudden I wake up 33 years later, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I'm one of the older people now, <laughs> what the heck, what the heck what happened? Mean, what, what do you mean we have an aging problem? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I, uh, after that presentation, I had somebody come up to me and said, um, hey, when was your first conference? And I said, well, honestly, my first conference was in Hawaii in 1980. And I was 13. Uh, it was the <laughs> I apologize. The cat that just jumped up here and a tail's going. Like, oh, that's front perfect. Of the camera. So, you know, <laughs> joys of working from home. Sorry, not to, not to interrupt the Hawaii conference. That sounds No, amazing. I'm sure the dogs that's, will that's, barking that's, here. That, 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 that's better than my first conference in like Teaneck, New Jersey. I mean, you started with Hawaii. Like, yeah. the rest of the, this career it, just a letdown. <laughs> it, was the, uh, it was the AEL, which was the predecessor to ELA and now ELFA. And uh, Henry Kissinger was the speaker. Oh, pretty interesting. Um, but my first real conference as, as, as an adult was, uh, uh, I think it was 91 in, in San Francisco. And, um, you know, what an interesting journey since then in um, seeing the industry grow and evolve. Um, the development of technology. I mean, dude, I remember, not only do I remember fax machines, I remember a thermofax. 
you know, thermo paper. Uh, mostly the audience is going, what is he talking about? Uh, IBM. That's what they're for. They've, they've already looked it yeah. up. They already have it. <laughs> IBM select, you know, selector typewriters, you know, and, and typing up documents and UCCs was a really big deal because uh, you had to be really good. So you didn't, uh, you didn't mess them up uh, to, you know, first gen computers, you know, 33 diskettes to put it in to load the operating system. You know, I, I'm, I'm literally talking like an old guy now, Jesse. It's, it's, it's sad. Um, but it's, it's, it's been, uh, it's been a really interesting journey. And I think the best thing for me is the people. Uh, and I think you would agree with me on this. You know, it really is a, a relatively small community. Uh, we, we always joke there's only 5,000 of us and we just keep moving around to different, different places. Um, but the people are, are great. And, you know, when you look at the, the ABL world and we're such a small piece of the asset back lending community, but, you know, we're this trillion dollar industry that people don't really think about, uh, but they know is there. And, and the people that are associated with it are just, are just the best. You know, I, I had the pleasure of uh, this last weekend, uh, playing golf with some industry veterans, Jim Merrilies and, and, and Ron Wagner. And, um, and both said the same thing. Uh, I said, do you miss the business? And both said, I miss, we miss the people. Uh, we miss the business, but it's, it's the people that we really miss, the people in the industry and, and going to conferences. And uh, I, I absolutely want to echo that. I, I think that's, that's absolutely true that from an industry standpoint, and I'll preface this by saying, I don't know any better. It's the only industry I've, I've ever been in. But uh, from those that come from outside of it, they, they say the same thing and how much they enjoy this business and, and the industry and, uh, and the people. No, I mean, it's nail on the head. It's uh, what do I constantly tell people? It's like the Hotel California. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> we actually say it's like the mob, you know, once you're in, you're not getting out. <laughs> That's a, that's a, that's a good analogy as, as well. I mean, it's, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think of this is going on my 18th year um, wow. and was started off in 2005. And after my first company, Fiserv was looking to hire me to do something different. And then someone else in the industry found out and they're like, no, 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 you come work for us. And it's like, oh. Yeah, I don't want to leave this industry. Of course not. Why would I want to leave this? So yeah, and now fun. there's no now there's no option. You're uh, you're stuck here for uh, you're no. stuck here forever. <laughs> Does not respond well to authority. Goes into consulting. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Oh, but that, that's fantastic. Um, you know, if you don't mind, we just spend a couple minutes talking about Alliance Funding Group. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, um, you know, another question that's been asked of me is, is why did you join uh, Alliance Funding Group AFG? And uh, I had my own company for 20 years. Uh, well, that was, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna get- Pinnacle Capital, I yeah. I probably should have started with that because that was yeah. another question <laughs> yeah. I wanna ask where it's well, like, what's it like owning your own? Cause then didn't you finance like, was it, was it, beer or breweries. Yeah. craft breweries yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And it's like if, well why, why, would you ever give, why, stuff, why, why, why would you ever right why would you ever give that up it's like taste <laughs> testing let's go <laughs> yeah that's why i'm so old now uh no is you know i i started in a in a family uh business uh in 1990 working with my with my dad and and growing up in an entrepreneurial environment uh, we sold and went public in 1997, uh, a company called First Sierra uh, Financial. And uh, my dad, that was his sunset post. He, he retired in, in 98. Uh, and at the millennium uh, with a two month old little girl who's now uh, 23, I uh, decided to go out on my own and, and start uh, Pinnacle Capital. Um, with two other people, a uh, small little office here in Tacoma, Washington. Um, I remember the phone system showed up before the furniture. So for the first week, we sat on the floor. Uh, you know, you hear all these stories. You know, I always tell young people who want to get in this business and go out on their own. It's, 
it, it's a journey. It, it looks easy and, and it's not, um, you know, built Pinnacle up to the 17th largest independent in, in the country. And it was an amazing experience to do, to, to grow this business in the, in the early 2000s, between 2000 and 2020. And think about what happened during that time period, you know, the financial crisis, you know, 9-11 sure. <laughs> uh, crisis. Uh, you know, I started it right at the dot com and the millennium. And, you know, nobody knew what was going to happen in 2000. Were all these systems going to blow up and what happened? Sure. I started my company January 13th. I, you know, I, I left the public company and went out on my own and didn't take a paycheck for a year and have a two month old little baby. And I'm like, well, we'll figure this out. <laughs> and it was a recessionary period then too. Sure. And sure. Um, then to build it um, and then get into this unique period of, of 2008 and, and 2009, uh, you know, those that were around then and experienced that, there, there are some huge takeaways from that. And, and, and those lessons can't be forgotten. Uh, they, they always have to be remembered. Uh, we can talk more about that too. But um, I, uh, I hadn't planned on doing a strategic deal. I uh, was going to recap the company. We were privately held. And uh, Bridge Patel, who is the CEO of, of AFG, someone I've known in the industry for, for a long time, just through sure. the industry, uh, reached out to say, um, hey, I'd like to speak with you you know, about, uh, you know, doing a deal. And, uh, you know, it's, I, you know, I, uh, I thought, you know, do I want to do a deal with the OC mafia? Right. And, uh, and I say that jokingly, right. No, no, but, but bridge, everyone knows bridge. When, when, when bridge comes to events, people know bridge, you know, he's there at, yeah. at, at, he, at the event. He, he's a big, he's a big personality in a small package. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he's a great guy. I didn't really know him that well. And he flew up to Seattle the very next day. And I'm like, whoa, uh, literally hadn't seen the guy in over, over a decade. And we sat down for a day and, and had dinner that evening and uh, with myself and my, my business partners to share the vision that he had for AFG and what he really wanted to do. And although the company had been around 20 years, he was really looking to build it um, on balance sheet and go to the next level and you know there aren't a lot of larger independents left anymore uh so many of them have been sold you know you look at the the leafs and the ascentiums and the and the balboas and uh or their private equity you know backed and uh, there's not a lot of independence left and he really wanted to to build something and it just sounded like an amazing opportunity and um not, although it wasn't something I'd considered, it, it, it got me excited and to, you know, to shift gears later in my career and, and really focus on, on building a company on balance sheet to a larger scale. We're over 550 million under management now. Right. And to go into the securitization market, which we'll be doing right as this video comes out in you know, third week in, uh, in, in February. Um, and so it's been a very different experience, you know, and, and, and not all bad. People say, do you miss being a CEO? Uh, and the answer for the most part is no. Uh, <laughs> it's somebody else's problem. Now. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. I, <laughs> I, I work out of my house. I'm a hired assassin that works out of a laptop and a backpack. And, uh, you know, I, I do a fair amount of, of traveling. We're headquartered in Orange County. So I go back and forth there. And then spend a lot of time in New York and Chicago where the banks are. And um, it's, 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 it's different, but I, uh, I really like it. You know, building businesses is, is fun, but it's hard. Uh, managing organizations is, is challenging um, and, and not getting any easier. Um, you know, so it's, it, it's, it, it's a very different and unique experience for me, but one that I, I'm really enjoying, um, you know, AFG is a, uh, is a great culture that, uh, and those guys are fun. Uh, they're crazy, uh, but they're fun. I can, I, I can only imagine. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can only imagine. 
um, you know, very, very bright. Uh, you know, those guys are, are very genuine and very generous. Um, okay. The banker that got Bridge and I together uh, made a comment that was absolutely true. And he said, you know, uh, they'll make the business fun for you again. And, and he was absolutely right. And not that I wasn't having fun before, but I mean, it's, sure. it's hard running these companies, especially as a smaller independent is, is really a lot of work and not getting any easier. And being part of a larger organization that's also independent, privately held, no outside capital or PE sponsorship or, or, or bank affiliation, um, and, and to operate a larger scale, yet still have a really fun culture uh, has, has been such a treat. No, that's, um, that's fantastic. I mean, I, I can only imagine that breath of fresh air. And when, when did you officially join Alliance Funding? So I joined in uh, February 15 of 2020. Uh, perfect time. Perfect so time. I get an A for timing. Uh, per perfect. Well, I, was, genius, I, was, uh, no, I, was, I was like, yeah. Absolutely. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I, I got I got on the airplane. There was five people on a plane. It's time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it, I'll never forget it. We we actually closed. The actual closing was March 12th. I was in the office. Uh, we shared the building with Kaiser and they had a, a positive COVID. And, and that was so early on in the pandemic that nobody knew yeah. what that meant. And we were evacuating the building. Uh, we're signing documents as fast as we can. Uh, Lysoling everything. You oh my go God. You take off like, your clothes. Your wife's not going to let you in the yeah. house until you did that. You were exposed. Yeah, like five Run floors to the down. airport, get on a plane. <laughs> you know, I got core. We have a family has a house up on the coast, and I got quarantined up there thinking, am I going to die? Oh, What's going to happen? And, um, yeah, interesting. And, and I, I'll give you, I miss COVID travel. Though. I'll tell you that COVID travel yes. was fantastic. Uh, you'd get on this jet and you'd have like literally 10 people. Uh, airport security was walking through. Hey, Bob, how are the kids? Uh, it was great. Uh, traffic, especially here in Seattle and Southern California. It was the best, uh, you know, but it, you know, business goes on and you know it's amazing how well uh the industry did we were all braced for like you know what's is this going to be another 08 not at all uh the industry did quite well the portfolios held uh businesses uh not only survived but even continued to thrive and you know you know what came out of that now is this new dynamic right like myself included i'm working from home, you know, I worked in an office for over three decades, and uh, I came home for COVID, and I, I never left. Uh, we still have our offices here in Tacoma, and but I, I really enjoy working from home, and and now it's 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 working with colleagues and managing staff in a much more dynamic and flexible environment. Some are back in office, some are remote, some are hybrid, and and I, that's here to stay. And so it's, it's managing that, uh, that new dynamic, but uh, um, got a little sidetracked there, but all part of the AFG experience. I guess. No, no, no. I mean, you brought up so many good points on there and, and, you know, one of the things that we try to, to hit on during some of our EFC events, by the way, I called up bridge and told him about equipment finance cares. And he's like, I want AFG to be an annual sponsor. So I don't know if you knew that. You did, you, yeah. You, you guys are, so I appreciate your help uh, with all that too. But Absolutely. you know, you brought up a good point there where you were three decades. So in the industry for 33 years mm -hmm. in an office, mm -hmm. people that got are getting in the industry now or even people that might not have an established network like you do, what does that do for those professionals from a cultural perspective? Because a lot of this industry, like you said, it's all about the people. It's all about yeah. the networking. That's the challenge, right? And, um, you know, when you're a young associate, nothing replaces being there in person, being alongside those veterans that you you learn from, that right. are mentors yeah. for you, and um, you know the 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 real young generation 
uh, the Zoomers, as, as Peter Zion calls them. <laughs> Um, that's going to be a real interesting dynamic. My kids, you know, my kids are 23 and 20 and, um, you know, my, my daughter just started a new job. She graduated last year from, from Loyola Marymount university and spent the entire day in the office yesterday. And she came back like, Oh my God, what was that? I'm like, it's, it's called a full-time job. Uh, <laughs> you have to talk with people. Um, I joke, but, uh, it's interesting. And, and I don't know the answer uh jesse it's you know for for those of us that have been around being remote and, and hybrid and all that it's great that's easy but if you're a new if you're a new person you're a young associate getting into the business that's a different dynamic and i think it's something we're still figuring out that you know you want to get those people in office as as much as you can knowing that you know the, the current workforce expects and demands greater flexibility now. Like when I started, you know, you couldn't demand anything. <laughs> you just, you're just lucky to be here, uh, sure. you know, <laughs> and you wore your suit and your tie, you know, the whole thing. And, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I laugh now, it's so old school. And, but back then, I mean, back in the late eighties, early nineties, you know, and yeah. And, and now there's a, an expectation and a dynamic that, you know, there has to be some flexibility. And that's absolutely, absolutely true. Um, you know, uh, as an industry, I think educate, and like a lot of what you're doing, uh, Jesse, with, you know, with Equipment Finance Cares, a lot of it is, it's networking, it's connectivity, it's education. And, and these are all the things that with the next gen, with the younger professionals coming into our industry, we absolutely have to make an investment in and focus on. Uh, we are getting older. Uh, our entire industry is getting older. And, and most uh, of us, most of our companies um, are dealing with that challenge at some level to bring in next gen to bring in young talent you know to, to join the exciting career that is equipment leasing and finance um but it is fun it is exciting when people learn about it and realize that we how many businesses we touch you know we are front line in small business lending nobody is closer than than we are outside of a, of a local community bank and and that's really powerful. And you look at the, the impact that we have on the overall economy and GDP. And again, we're a trillion dollar industry, you know, a trillion dollar industry that most people don't really think about. They hear about auto yeah. leasing or things like that. But, um, you know, so we have a duty and an obligation, I argue, to bring in young people and to embrace them and help train and develop them in this career within commercial lending, asset back lending. And, and you're right, we're going to figure it out. Um, you know, it's been a real treat to see, you know, going to these conferences now and seeing um, greater diversity. Um, I think, you know, the women in leasing, that has been absolutely fantastic to watch. Uh, I think at the last conference in the fall, they had like over 200 uh, women in attendance in, you know, both Chicago and um, yeah. in, the, uh, in the fall conference. And uh, just fantastic. I mean, just fantastic. And, and that's awesome. And we got to continue to really ride that wave big time in terms of, of diversity. And so it's bringing in young talent. It's bringing in diverse talent. And, you know, and all of that absolutely makes sense because look at who our customers are. Look at the businesses that we're sure. serving. Sure. Um, so that part, I guess, you know, from a, from a uh, historic standpoint, I think for me, that's been one of the coolest things for me, uh, especially the last, you know, 10 years, especially is seeing the, the changes, uh, the, the, the diversity in the industry. And there's still more to do. I mean, we're not, we're not there, but now it's not a bunch of, you know, older white guys hanging out with, you know, a cocktail in, in their hand. I mean, when I started in this, dude, it, oh my gosh, it was you know, it makes you really appreciate the Betty Kuhulises of the world uh, who were, you know, one of the very few women that were there. Um, sure. And now it's, it's so much different and, and so much better. Uh, I'm really excited about that and, and where that is, is going, because that's just going to make our industry that much 
better. And if our industry is going to continue to grow and evolve and be relevant and be the frontline player in, 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 in supporting small business that it is, you know, it has to be as deep and wide as possible. It has to be diverse. It has to be, uh, you know, uh, you know, if we're to serve, you know, everyone, then we have to be made up of everyone. And I'm really excited about that. I, that's probably the one thing I'm most excited about with the industry. And kind of as I get in the latter five, 10 years of, of my career, and I'm more excited for my daughter now than, you know, like my sister, you know, my sister also started uh, in this industry, but she's smarter than me. So she left. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. But that part and people like yourself and the work that, you know, EFC is doing, that's, that's really, really good stuff. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, like you said, it's, it's getting over that uh, old, old white men, you know, all these people in this industry do is care about money. Um, so it's been a refreshing part, um, you know, about the EFC where you sit there and you see like all the passion projects that people do outside of equipment finance or what organizations do to give back to their communities. So it's been an honor to showcase and put the spotlight on that. Um, Cause especially the younger generation coming up, like some of the questions they ask people is like, what corporate goodwill do you do? If I care about a charity, are you going to match what I donate? Um, so it's almost like people would rather take less money if an organization's giving them more corporate goodwill to do in the community, which is not something that I ever thought about, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're much more accountable now, right? And and stuff like that really matters. And I I love that accountability. And I love the fact now when you go to different uh, association meetings, and in many cases, trade shows, there are a lot of philanthropic events associated with that. And not just to check boxes, it's stuff that's right. real, that people are passionate about. And it's a variety of things. I mean, here at AFG, it's big brothers, big sisters. I mean, that okay. is our, that's our passion uh, partnership. Uh, is big brothers, big sisters, and you know that's an organization that we feel strongly about. Uh, we strongly support. Uh, when you talk about frontline, high impact, uh, young people, uh, that's something that just really resonated with us. And you know, there's so many great organizations out there it's 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 hard to to align with one and, and and they are all great and they all have their missions but big brothers big sisters was one that really resonated with with us and um, you know it's it's great to see what uh the associations do with uh you know their charitable uh activity especially locally you know, like if you're in New Orleans, like we were in New Orleans and the work that was done there and in Florida post hurricane, you know, the work that was done there. And, you know, I, I love that, you know, the associations are willing to all of them to roll up their sleeves and, and get dirty and, and help out and continue to really be frontline. Um, and then just the other things that a lot, like a lot of the work that you've done, I mean, you've been a real leader in this effort. Uh, Jesse, the last few years, especially, and if anyone has really helped promote and spotlight, you know, th this, this additional work that we should all be including and encompassing in, in, in what we do professionally, uh, it's, it's you. So thank you. Uh, I mean, thank you're you. not just you're talking the talk, man, you're, you're walking the walk. Trying to, trying to. I mean, um, you know, it's the advantage of being in a business development role and having that marketing budget when you have conversations. With you. I didn't know that AFG was big brother, big sister. So I might have to touch base with you on the side about that one, um, you know, and see if we can help raise some, some additional funds on, on behalf of AFG for that. But when you sit there and you talk to these individuals, um, whether if it's just a a shelter down the street or some other country that they're helping out. It's, it's nice to be able to put the spotlight on that to generate additional awareness. So other people see the value that these people are bringing to these um, foundations and charities. Cause the, the hardest problem I have with it is people like yourself um, and like bridge, they don't want the attention. They do it because that's what they're passionate about. And that's fantastic. 
the challenge I have with that is like, well, can we share that story? So other people at other companies see what other people are doing so we can set that example and follow in their footsteps. Because like I said, a lot of the new generation that's coming up through, you know, they want to be actively involved. How do they do their part? So. <laughs> I think that's right. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And, and that's change, right? All of this is, is a part of, 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 of change and, and how our industry is continuing to change and evolve and the people in it uh, change and evolve. I mean, 10 years ago, we weren't having any of these conversations. I mean, heck, probably five years ago. Uh, not to the same degree, and now it is so much more part of the of of the norm. And yeah, this is what we do. Uh, this is how we do business. This is how we work with with people in our organization. Um, and and you know, one of the powers that we have collectively as an industry within our or within our associations, within our organizations, and as individuals. Um, you know, the, the duty we have now, the impact that we have now, and the awareness that is there, which all align with what we do professionally in, 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 yeah. in business lending, um, in primarily small business. Um, so I, I love that. I, I, I like that. That's, that's, again, that's one of the big changes in the industry um, that I really get it excited about and um, you know where does it go from here you know what does it look like you know in the next 10 20 years and uh, uh, as technology continues to evolve and social awareness continues to evolve um, regulatory you know that it's interesting some of the early early conversations you know talking about regulation um, you know, when I first started, it was all post 86 changes in investment tax credit, things like that, <laughs> and what type of regulatory would be happening. And, and, it, and it took, you know, three decades, but it finally happened. And, you know, what does the environment look like for us in a, in a you know, a more regulated uh, sure, type especially with some of those California disclosure laws that are coming out? It's like, bridge time. out. To time, right. no, they're, well, they're already out. Bridge time to pick up and leave OC and go to a different state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right. That's funny. That's so funny. I was telling Shervin, he goes, he goes, well, what do we do? I'm like, move. <laughs> you go back to your roots, which go, is crew leasing. You go know, to a different state. I, there's that too. Are you, you know, you, yeah, I think Arizona picked up a uh, congressional seat and California lost one. Um, <laughs> Sorry. You know, yeah. Hopefully for the industry, it's it, it's a reintroduction into, you know, equipment leasing, uh, something that many forgot, you know, going into into 2000 kind of moved to, you know, leasing kind of became a bad word and and the rise of financing and the equipment financing agreements. And uh, now the pendulum, I think, is going to start to swing the other way. Right. The market always finds a way. It always corrects. Well, especially with the rates, too. You just think it'd be more, you know, it's a great product. Yeah, it, it's a great product. And I think it's something that's going to come back more, should come back more. I think it's a beneficial product. And, um, you know, as, an, as typically non-bank uh, lenders uh, and so, or some variation thereof, you know, we're always able to get closer to the customer and, and provide, I argue, more benefit to the customer. And, and we'll find a way to continue to, to do that. But um, yeah, the next five, 10 years for sure will be interesting. Yeah, no. So as, how did you get your first brewery deal when you were at Pinnacle? Was it something where like, and, and this is more just curiosity, Patrick, because I hear some people where they're like, oh, I talked to Augusta. So and Augusta wants we, to do a deal, but we made, made something where we have to go on site and maybe get around in or something like that. So it's like- so, we're going to, we're going to, we started our conversation with Hawaii and, and we're going to end our conversation with, with Hawaii. And there was a, an originator that, uh, that we worked with at Pinnacle, uh, a guy named Rick Wainer at uh, Brewery Finance. And he called me, um, this was, oh my gosh, this was, uh, after the downturn, so it had to be, I don't know, 2010-ish. 
and uh, he said, "Hey, I have I need help on a on a deal. It's it's kind of out of the box. It's but I think it's something you could get your your arms around, and it's for uh, it's for Maui Brewing." And um, and I said, "Really?" Now he did not know at the time that I was in Maui, and I was less than a mile down the road. Uh, in Nepali from where the original Maui Brewing was, and they were building out their new production facility in Kanapali. And he says, is there any chance uh, you could, you know, sp speak with this guy? And I said, yeah, yeah, sure. He didn't know where I was yet. And I said, well, tell you what, uh, he's about a mile from here. I'll call him. And if I don't, you know, drive, I'll just like walk. And Rick was like, what? <laughs> I said, Rick, I'm here. I'm in, I'm in Hawaii. So I met with, uh, met with Garrett in person. So the first deal we did was Maui Brewing and um, in person, because I literally happened to be a mile down the road and um, ended up acquiring uh, Rick's business for refinance. I became a part of uh, a part of Pinnacle. And so he's, he's to blame. He's a good, good friend, good colleague. And uh, ended up uh, becoming one of the lead, uh, you know, financial uh, providers for the craft brewing space and, and coffee roasting both. But, um, and then if you can finance them, why not own one? And uh, being the, the genius that, that I am, um, we had a, uh, in our building here in Tacoma, an old, it's an old historic building and, and it, downstairs was the old garage. It was the original municipal building. Yeah, that's where the original fire truck was and, and, and all of that. And we just had it full of stuff. And I thought, man, that'd make a great brewery. And so that's what we did. Uh, so we built it out and we formed Pacific Brewing. And so nothing like having a brewery in your office right downstairs. Um, I was going to put a fire pole in so I could get down there as fast as I could. But I thought, eh, that's probably a bad idea. <laughs> as long as it goes down and you don't have eventually right. having people go up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right so uh yeah that was the beer the beer journey and uh still to this day my 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 favorite conference to go to is the craft brewers conference uh that's, that's awesome. a good conference to go to so that's fantastic uh, yeah that's, that's that's remarkable um i i do ask before i let you go i i ask everyone who comes on here to give a little fun fact about themselves other than what you've already shared just there with the uh, Pacific Brewing, so. Oh my gosh, a fun fact. Jeez, I don't know if I have a fun fact. Um, let's see. Uh, well, uh, in my in my younger days, I uh, I was a triathlete, and I am a uh, five time Ironman. Nice. So yeah, uh, back when I was young and in shape, and I'm like uh, I'm like now. <laughs> Uh, like, like five times that eh, sounds exhausting like yeah no it was it was it was fun so yeah outside of the uh, equipment leasing business and uh, and the beer uh the beer beer business uh like to uh like to do triathlon so i i, I did right. that for a number of years which which i really enjoyed and what was your favorite beer that pacific west came up with pacific west came up with um my favorite beer, our flagship was a was a lager, but my my favorite beer is is is, is they call a, a West Coast style IPA. Okay. Uh, your East Coast style would be more your hazies, and okay. uh, the West Coast style uh, IPA. I'm still most impartial to that, and still my favorite, uh, still my favorite style. I can imagine as you is there like what is it for for um, for wineries? It's a vintner. Is it something similar in breweries? Like, is there a, a name for? Is a master brewer? I mean, I just met oh, the guy. It could be. We just yeah. had a, we, we had a bourbon. We had a bourbon tasting, and the guy from Buffalo Trace was mm -hmm. a master distiller. <laughs> like that was his name. You know, so it's was like, oh, it's funny how they call them master brewers. There's not really a designation for that. I think it's kind of a self-described, you know, officially yeah, 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 head yeah. brewer, but. Uh, some somewhere along the line, they became a master uh, brewer. Uh, so uh, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. 
Awesome. Well, um, you know, really appreciate your time today, uh, Brent. It's good. Um, good seeing your face. Always good catching up. And, um, you know, probably see what another two months in, uh, at NIFA. Probably every other week uh, with all the conferences that lined up. It's uh, get into the, the, the spring tour here. So I look forward to, uh, to seeing you in person. It'll be coming up soon, sir. Appreciate your time today. Great. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for having me.